Today, we're going to shake things up with a deep dive into one of the most earth-shattering events in American history, the Great San Francisco Earthquake of 1906. This isn't just any old disaster story, it's a tale of destruction, resilience, and a city rising from the ashes. Picture this, it's April 18, 1906, just past 5 a.m. The folks of San Francisco are snoozing away, dreaming of trolley cars and sourdough bread. Little do they know, they're about to get the rudest awakening of their lives. At exactly 5.12 a.m., the ground starts to tremble. Then shake. Then violently convulse. Buildings sway, streets split open, and chaos erupts faster than you can say San Andreas' fault. This wasn't your average earthly hiccup, we're talking about a monstrous 7.9 on the Richter scale. The quake itself lasted a mere 42 seconds, but boy, what a 42 seconds it was. The rupture zoomed along the fault at a breakneck speed, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. From Eureka in the north to the Salinas Valley in the south, the earth was doing the cha-cha, and not in a good way. When fire meets earthquake. Now, you might think the earthquake was bad enough. But hold on to your hats folks, because the worst was yet to come. As if the ground trying to swallow the city wasn't enough, San Francisco decided to turn up the heat, literally. Fires broke out all over the city faster than you could say where's the water. And with water mains busted and the fire department in shambles, those flames had an all-you-can-burn buffet. For four whole days, fires raged through the city, turning the city by the bay into the city of ashes. The Aftermath When the dust settled and the flames finally died down, San Francisco looked like it had gone ten rounds with Mother Nature and lost. Over 80% of the city was toast. We're talking about 28,000 buildings reduced to rubble and ash. The human toll? Devastating. While the exact number is still up for debate, more on that later, it's estimated that anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 people lost their lives. Imagine, four-fifths of one of America's biggest cities, gone in less than a week. It was like someone had pressed the reset button on San Francisco. The Great Cover-Up now, here's where things get interesting. You'd think with a disaster this big, the bigwigs in charge would be all about getting help and spreading the word, right? Wrong. They were more worried about their bottom line than bottom-up relief efforts. The city's movers and shakers didn't want the world to know just how bad things were. They were scared stiff that investors would run for the hills and the city's rebuild would be slower than molasses in January. So, what did they do? They pulled the wool over everyone's eyes. The official death toll was set at a suspiciously low for 78. City officials went around telling tall tales about how San Francisco would bounce back bigger and better than ever. They even tried to downplay the earthquake itself, focusing instead on the fire. Why? Because earthquakes were seen as acts of God that insurance wouldn't cover, but fire damage? That's where the money was. Rising from the ashes. But here's the thing those officials weren't entirely wrong about San Francisco bouncing back. The people of this great city showed more grit than sandpaper in the face of disaster. Within three years, 20,000 new buildings had popped up like daisies after a spring rain. By 1915, less than a decade after being knocked flat, San Francisco was ready to host the Panama Pacific International Exposition. Talk about a comeback, kid. Life in the Aftermath Now, don't get me wrong the road to recovery wasn't exactly paved with gold. Imagine 225,000 people suddenly homeless, living in makeshift tent cities in parks and on beaches. It was like a massive, citywide camping trip, minus the marshmallows and ghost stories. These refugee camps, as they were called, were a sight to behold. Golden Gate Park, the Presidio, even the beaches were covered with tents and makeshift shelters. It was a regular canvas city. And then there was the looting. Things got so out of hand that the mayor issued a shoot-to-kill order for anyone caught stealing. Talk about laying down the law with an iron fist. You'd think after such a shake-up, the city would rebuild everything safer than Fort Knox, right? Well, yes and no. While new building codes were put in place, not everyone followed them to AT. Some folks even started fires on purpose to cash in on their insurance. But it wasn't all skullduggery and corner-cutting. 
the disaster led to some major advances in earthquake science. Geologists finally had hard evidence of the San Andreas Fault's destructive power. And city planners? They got a crash course in disaster preparedness that would shape urban development for years to come. The Earthquake Cottage One of the coolest things to come out of the rebuild was the Earthquake Cottage. These tiny houses were built by the army to house displaced residents. They were small, they were simple, but they were home to thousands of San Franciscans trying to get back on their feet. And get this, some of these cottages are still standing today, over a century later. They're like little time capsules scattered throughout the city, reminding us of the resilience of both the buildings and the people who called them home. How the earthquake changed the West Coast The 1906 earthquake didn't just reshape San Francisco physically, it changed the whole balance of power on the West Coast. Before the quake, San Francisco was the top dog, the big cheese, the bee's knees of Western cities. But afterward, a lot of business and influence shifted south to Los Angeles. It's like the earthquake picked up the west coast and gave it a good shake, and when everything settled, the pieces had fallen in a whole new pattern. San Francisco rebuilt, sure, but it never quite regained its crown as the undisputed queen of western cities. Today, San Francisco is a leader in earthquake preparedness. From stricter building codes to advanced early warning systems, the city has learned from its past and is ready for whatever tremors the future might bring. So there you have it, the earth-shattering tale of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. If you enjoyed this historical roller coaster, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.